So this video is jumping the gun a little bit. I don't really like to jump the gun, um, but a lot of people have been asking, am I still involved with graphene? Am I still working on the fuser? Uh, and a few other people have been asking me, how on earth am I quoting these resistance figures? Uh, and the answer is yes, I'm still working on graphene. And the main thing that I've been working on is this thing. And this is a, a graphene-based conductive ink. Now, it doesn't only contain graphene in it, obviously, it's got a whole host of things in it. Uh, to be honest, I've been having quite a bit of success out of it. Now, you can't just mix those things together to make an ink. Obviously, you have to mix them together in some kind of binder, something that will stop them all separating out and help glue them all together and hold them to whatever substrate you want to paint them on and um, fix them once they dry. And I've been using a number of things, but one of the things I'm using is this stuff, and this is sodium silicate or water glass. And I've been using that stuff because I've been making a um, ceramic conductive paint. So you can paint it on the bottom of, bottom of a plate, uh, pop it on an induction heater, and it will heat the plate. So that's one of the things that I've been doing with it. Another one is I've been making a water-based one, which is this one here, where you um, get actually quite good conductivity and flow out of it. Another one is a waterproof one, which is this one here. So I've been making these various inks. Now, I've been having some success out of it. Um, not a wonderful amount to begin with, but actually it's been improving greatly um, in the last few weeks or so. And what I'm getting is a material that actually paints beautifully. It's really nice and smooth. It lays out really nicely, it paints quite beautifully, and it's very, very conductive. Uh, what's more, you don't really have to paint it, you can actually draw it with a pen as well. So if I dip a pen in there, I can draw pen lines with it. So it paints really nicely, it draws really nicely, and I've been having quite a lot of success with it. Now, I have been selling the water-based one on eBay, because I think it's um, actually relatively ready. And if I paint a square of the stuff, which I've done here, and we test the conductivity of it, now I've been advertising this conductivity as um, 70 ohms per square. See that I've rested the measurement device on there, and you're meant to press on it so that you get a good contact between the um, contacts and the um, reader. And if I hold that up for you and press on that, you see I'm getting about 30 ohms a square, 29. So that's actually fairly impressive when you think that things like Vorink are getting 20 ohms per square and I'm getting 29 ohms per square out of my kitchen. Oh, another quick thing to point out is that Vorinks only achieve their low, resistivity, uh, low resistances after a high temperature annealing process where the inks I've been making actually have no annealing process. You just paint them on and let them dry and you get those kind of figures out of them. Now, competing inks are getting down as far as 20 ohms per square and that is my um, overall target and I'll feel I've had some success out of it if I can get it down to 20 ohms. So I'm selling it at 70 ohms on eBay. It's actually at the moment measuring about 30 to 40 ohms and I figure out 20 ohms then I'm going to be competing directly with things like Vore Ink and Zen Ink. Um, so we're jumping the gun a little bit because I've been asked so many times what are you actually up to in terms of the real research, if you like, as opposed to soaps. Um, soaps are real research as well, but this is what I've been doing is making graphene inks and um, I measure it in terms of sheet resistivity, which is measured in ohms per square. Anyway, I hope that explains uh, what I've been up to and um, thank you for watching.